Good evening, and welcome back to the Daily Dope Chronicles. I am your friendly commentator. I am Brand, and uh, this is kind of like a, a sequel to last year's election, where we're going to light one up to celebrate, because once again, we'd won. Weed has won again. Weed has won the election. People went and voted, and weed won. <laughs> Actually, you know, we're winning. We'll say that. There wasn't anything on the ballot anywhere where you was actually going to legalize, like marijuana. You weren't going to legalize recreational marijuana. You weren't going to do any of those. But what you were going to do is you were going to go ahead and pass some resolutions. You were going to decriminalize a whole town in Ohio. And you were going to basically reverse the shuttering of dispensaries in Detroit. Um, so let's just go ahead and get into this. <clears throat> We're going to start in Virginia where I guess we take what we can get. Um, I'm not going to say too much more about the politics behind this election that happened here because I really didn't follow it, so I can't really say a whole lot. But from what I understand, this guy voted for Bush both times. <laughs> um, what more can I say? And I don't really like his plan for marijuana, but I guess it's better than the Republican guy. So, and I mean, that's the way Democratic politics is these days. You just got to, like, look at the other guy and be like, ooh, he's gross. I guess I'll vote for the Democrat. Um, it's still working in places like, you know, some places like Virginia and whatever. So anyway, Virginia voters gave Lieutenant Governor Ralph Northam a promotion on Tuesday, electing him to serve as the state's next governor. Northam, a Democrat, made marijuana decriminalization a centerpiece of his gubernatorial campaign, often describing the issue in racial justice terms. He also spoke about the medical benefits of cannabis. By the way, this is Tom Angel, who's bringing you the full rundown on this situation, because actually he did follow it. <clears throat> Quote, we need uh, to change sentencing laws and disproportion that disproportionately hurt people of color. One of the best ways to do this is to decriminalize marijuana. He wrote in a blog post early this year. African Americans are 2.8 times more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession in Virginia. The Commonwealth spends more than $67 million on marijuana enforcement money that could be better spent on rehab, rehabilitation. Um, and that's, that's a reoccurring thing that doesn't ever get mentioned in these legalization schemes or decriminalization or whatever, because that's the thing that a lot of the law enforcement don't want to hear is that, yeah, all that money we spend on marijuana enforcement, we're going to spend it on something else. And it might not even be law enforcement related. But if it is, it's probably not going to be what you think it is. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, you know, whatever. Um, as a physician, Northam is increasingly convinced by the data showing poten the potential health benefits of marijuana, such as pain relief, drug-resistant epilepsy, and treatment for PTSD, his campaign website says. Quote, by decriminalizing it, our researchers can better study the plant so doctors can more effectively prescribe drugs made from it. Hmm.
So he's kind of one of those Schedule 2 kind of persons. <clears throat> the Lieutenant Governor also sent a letter to the Virginia State Crime Commission, which is conducting a review of the efforts of potential marijuana decriminalization. Quote, Virginia spends $67 million on marijuana enforcement, enough to open another 13,000 pre-K spots for children, Northam wrote. <clears throat> African Americans are nearly three times as likely to get arrested for simple possession of marijuana, and sentencing guidelines that include jail time can all too often begin a dangerous cycle of recidivism. I'm glad someone's finally speaking up about the detailed situation that is um, our criminal justice system, which is overrun with people that are there for nonviolent drug offenses, especially people of color, especially black men. And a lot of people are always like, you know, Ann Coulter style, oh, nobody's actually in prison for possession. <laughs> You know, you're fucking lying, and you know it. The people are in prison for possession. Um, the numbers are staggering. And like this guy said, the recidivism cycle, it doesn't take much to get right back in there. And, you know, whatever. It's a whole other subject. But I'm glad that this uh, is one of the planks of this guy's uh, marijuana um, you know, one of the things he's passionate about, clearly, he's, he's made it a cornerstone of his whole political career talking about it. I mean, it, that's a pretty big gamble for a kind of right of center Democrat, wouldn't you think? Uh, during the a debate, Northrop mentioned that his father is a judge while making a point about the cost of enforcing marijuana laws. Let's check into that. You know, I, my father's a judge, as most of you all know. Uh, he's always said, Ralph, why is Virginia spending $67 million a year to enforce marijuana Sorry laws? We shit. really need to sit down at the table and look at decriminalizing marijuana and then be a, being able to use marijuana uh, for medical purposes. So a lot of things we need to do for Time criminal justice reform, and, and I do have a plan for that. Mr. Gillespie. Uh, was not critical of the governor for his decision and uh, made clear that in my view, um, you know, the, this is one of the powers of our governorship. I mean, all the authority of the governorship obviously has a big impact on the future of the Commonwealth we love. But, uh, you know, when it comes to this responsibility, it's a very somber, serious responsibility. I do support the death penalty in cases where we've had heinous crimes. and. It's something that I would weigh very carefully. Mental health would be a factor in a decision as to whether or not to grant clemency in that case. Um, but I don't have the information that the governor has at his disposable, disposal in making that decision. That's, a, that's, about that's weed, information dude? essentially only the governor has at his disposal, and so um, I'm not going to second guess him on that. I, I think there are some things where we ought to set aside sure. some partisanship and understand that this is a solemn responsibility of I the governorship and one I would treat that way. On law enforcement issues, there are, you know, my policies will make us safer as a commonwealth. Oh, sure. I, for example, we just talked about, a, you know, heinous crimes. We had a heinous crime up near me in northern Virginia not too long ago where a young woman, 17 years old. All right. We, he didn't want to legalize marijuana or even decriminalize. But like I said, uh, Northam's no saint when it comes to marijuana, but he seems to make it a big deal. So I'll give him credit for that. Here's some, some of his tweets. Decriminalizing marijuana would be a good step towards helping to correct systemic, uh, systematic racism in our justice system. And that was in July. African Americans are 2.8 times more likely to be arrested for marijuana than white people. Marijuana decriminalization is a racial justice issue. April 5th, 2017. Current marijuana laws are costly and hurt communities of color. That's why I believe in decriminalizing it. Now it's starting to sound like pandering um, by August, but uh, whatever. I mean, uh, we'll take what we can get, and I'm not, I'm not downgrading him. Uh, I just don't. I just don't see how just decriminalization is going to help this situation. I mean, where you know when you decriminalize, where does the marijuana come from? Does it just magically appear? 
Um, somebody has to grow it. Somebody has to either produce it that way or it has to be smuggled in, which usually involves smuggling large quantities of it in. So I don't really know how you decriminalize something that's not even supposed to be in existence, <laughs> according to all the other laws around you. But again, um, he's better than the Republican. And I think that with a little bit of uh, other things that I know that's going on in Virginia, there's a good chance that he might be pushed to the next thing, which is, hey, what about legalization? What are they doing about medical marijuana? And he's talking about it again here. And that's because nationally he feels that it should be rescheduled, like I said. Quote, what would happen uh, after that if his marijuana would be reclassified? And then we can look at medical uses, he told the Huff Post. And, at, uh, and the point I like to make to people is that there are probably around 100 or more medic medicines we use routinely that come from plants. And so there are many potential uses for marijuana. He really seems to think that you can make medicines out of the components of marijuana Kind of like Republicans always talk about, in my opinion. Um, I still am a firm believer of whole plant medicine. All the parts of cannabis are medicinal. And there's the concerto effect of having them all work in conjunction with each other and with turpins and other things that are in there. And as a result of them all combusting together or being dige di digested at the same time, um, mixing together in a certain way that creates other chemicals or other chemical reactions. And you need that. You can't just take like one part of cannabis and make some medicine out of it and expect it to be anything like whole plant cannabis. But whatever, you know, like I said, we take what we can get in Virginia. <laughs> uh, so when it comes to hemp, um, quote, a northern administration, northern administration will support new efforts to bring Virginia um, products to market, including industrial hemp processing, as campaign website says. Quote, several of the key public institutions, including Virginia State University, Virginia Tech, University of Virginia, and James Madison University, are conducting field research on industrial hemp and Virginia could explore workarounds to increase access to hemp for private growers. Additionally, at the federal level, Ralph supports the removal of industrial hemp from the Controlled Substances Act of 1970. As part of Ralph's economic development plan, he will continue efforts to recruit an industrial hemp processor for when the, for when the federal law changes. I'm sure that's supposed to say, but anyway... Um, yeah, so there you have it. Uh, there's your Virginia governor and he's basically, uh, I guess we got to hold his feet to the fire. He made a bunch of campaign campaign promises and on the, you know, on the inside of the administration there's already situations going on where they're looking into like they're studying they want to do some studies to see if medical marijuana is something that they want to do so we'll see what goes on with that it's good news so far but it gets better we have phil murphy winning in new jersey and with phil murphy's win it's full steam ahead for legal marijuana this is NewJersey.com. Susan K. Levio. Democrat Phil Murray's, Murphy's victory in the governor's race Tuesday night drives New Jersey, quote, full steam ahead towards legalizing marijuana and cultivating an estimated $1.3 billion industry, the sponsor of the legislation said. Throughout the campaign, Murphy has embraced the idea of making marijuana available for recreational use for people 21 and older. Early on, he made his support well known that he would sign a legalization bill when it arrived on his desk. He still has to brush off the, the stink from Chris Christie being there. 
And just remember that Chris Christie called um, legalized marijuana tax money blood money. Just remember that. So State Senate President Stephen Sweeney, a Democrat from Gloucester, Gloucester, who controls which bills the 40-member Senate debate will vote on, said his goal was to get the measure passed within 100 days of the Murphy administration. Pretty ambitious. Murphy has said he is also counting on the sales tax from legal cannabis, an estimated $300 million, as a key revenue source to help fund education programs and public worker pensions. Ooh, now, if you know anything about New Jersey, um, they've been running in the red for quite some time before uh, Christie even stepped in. But the deficit levels are going to be unmanageable by 2023 but i think they already are pretty ridiculous in my opinion um but by 2023 you're looking at a 3.6 billion dollar gap which is equivalent to 34 percent of sales taxes and 22 of gross incomes no one you know you can't raise tax that much i mean those are raises they're talking about um now, of course, you had a series of tax phase-outs Christie has touted as tax fairness. And that's pretty much what, uh, what this thing, how this ball got rolling on this. Um, and, you know, basically, let's cut to the chase. It's just a bunch of tax breaks for businesses and billionaires and millionaires. He gives all them guys tax breaks. And, and then he's like, oh, what are we going to do about that? Well... He raised the gas tax, um, increased it by 23 cents a gallon. <laughs> and that barely put a dent in it. And when asked about legalizing recreational for the tax money, and he called it blood money and all that shit, he scoffed at the, at the I think then he thought the estimate was less than 300 million. He was talking, I think they were talking about the estimated tax was somewhere in the 150 to 200 million range and he just scoffed at it like oh that's that's not going to pay all the tax breaks i gave my buddies so we know what we know what's going on with christie and his <clears throat> taxes and how you know quite frankly um the 300 million dollars what they want to do with it and what they do with it in other states that have had similar situations where when marijuana was legalized, there was a tax uh, deficit situation going on in the government. And instead of being like, oh, we're going to, you know, just put this in the general fund so it can get robbed like everybody else's tax money. And this big deficit is just like a giant hole that keeps getting bigger. Basically, like they earmark it. They're like, okay, you know, we're going to legalize marijuana so that we can use the taxes specifically for schools, this and this and that. And they, they tell you exactly what they're going to earmark it for. And that's what they've been doing. And if you keep up with it in like Washington or Colorado, uh, they've been pretty much, you know, sticking to what they said they were going to do every step of the way. And in some cases, they've they've gotten more revenue than what they expected or what they planned for and it's doing a lot of things man a lot of things that they said it was going to do so anyway uh senator nicholas scatari democrat from union the sponsor of the recreational cannabis cannabis bill that is still undergoing revisions uh-oh the election of Phil Murphy gets us a giant step closer. Without him, I don't know where we'd be. He has a hundred percent. He has a hundred percent commitment to it. Scatori said. Scatori said it would be a waste to hold another hearing on the legalization bill while Governor Chris Christie remained in office. That's because when they did the last one, uh, Christie basically laughed at him the whole time. The Republican governor has called legalizing pot beyond stupidity and a public health hazard that could promote the use of opioids and heroin. And we heard what he just said in his opioid commission about that topic. 
and how he basically said that, uh, you know, um, if marijuana, you know, as marijuana's legalization is, you know, mushrooming out of control, uh, we don't realize what the real impact of it is going to be. Kind of like what happened with the opioid thing. And it's like, I don't know if that's really a comparison that you want to make. Uh, Scatori said he continues to meet with people interested in the rapidly growing marijuana industry to make improvements to his bill. He declined to say what has changed since he had public uh, had a public hearing on the proposal in June. The revised bill will not contain a provision to let people grow their own cannabis plants. Uh-oh. That is a request by marijuana activists and some people registered with the medical marijuana program who complain the marijuana prices are too high. <sighs> Scatori said, um, the law, quote, should provide opportunity for business and economic opportunity, Scatori said. And he's basically saying that, you know, well, we want these, these opportunities for people big grow opportunities and di distribution opportunities, people that can work at the dispensaries and shit. But we want that to be like, without having to worry about a bunch of other people growing kind of competition. And this is the new style. It's basically like weed out the people that uh, fought to try to get it legalized before they even legalize it. Scatori also said he is trying to develop language that would promote cannabis entrepreneurship among minority communities disproportionately affected by arrests and convictions and other concern raised at the hearing. Giving anyone a leg up in what will undoubtedly be a competitive marketplace will not meet legal muster, he said. <laughs> He's really against it. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how to deal with it. After tonight, I will, he said. Okay. A lot of comments here. A lot. Um, it's because a lot of people are happy about this shit, you know. And I don't know. I didn't read through any of these yet, so I'm not going to bother you and bore you by jamming on down through the comments section of this article but that is a little bit uh more than you would normally see there but the, you know this is a local paper and i'm sure there's a few trolls in here so of course there's always trolls um <clears throat> so that's new jersey like the nightmare is over the chris christie insanity where you got one of the biggest prohibition advocates in the country. Chris Christie is clearly earned his place on the throne of being probably one of the top two, right next to Sessions, prohibitionist-minded persons that I've ever heard of in my life. The guy has no problem spewing the bottom of the barrel, grimiest, like, reefer madness you can ever, like, come up with. He even, he even comes up with some new shit sometimes. It's just like, damn, you really hate weed. And you don't, I mean, I don't know if he is educated and just, and he's just trolling. Who knows? All right, anyway. <clears throat> um, Athens, Ohio. That's another win for uh, cannabis. Athens, Ohio Cannabis Ordinance, better known as TACO, to completely remove all penalties for possessing, cultivating, and gifting up to 200 grams of marijuana was approved by voters election day by a vote of 77% to 23%. I heard they had a school thing uh, where it was like to get renew the school tax and maybe ask for a little bit more. 
And those things, generally speaking, unless the town is just totally like financially wrecked, they usually pass with pretty high percentage numbers. But I heard that that one was in the 60s, like mid-60s, and this one's 77%. Um, so in 2016, the election, overshadowed, of course, by all the big national news, um, four Ohio municipalities, Newark, Logan, Roseville, and Blair, passed similar depenalization ballot measures. Under Ohio state law, minor marijuana possession offenses are classified as a minor misdemeanor punishable by a fine, but no jail time or criminal record. Quote, voters overwhelmingly approved tackle because continued criminalization uh of adult marijuana use is out of step with the views of the vast majority of adults in the United States, 64% of whom now endorse legalizing and regulating cannabis, said Justin Streckel, normal poli uh, political director. Quote, while politicians continue to drag their feet, citizens are showing leadership at the local and state level in jurisdictions where the ability to achieve marijuana reform is possible at the ballot box. That's it there. Um, Ohio is, is starting to become like more realistic about their approach to the drug war. Everything except for that one guy who said, we're not going to give you any Narcon over in this town. Actually, the whole county. But So we have uh, one more story to give you in the victories around the area. And this is uh, Detroit. I kind of followed the story a little bit here and there. I'm sure I gave you the updates when updates were happening. And one of the updates was that this made the ballot. And the new update is that it passed. So Detroit voters said yes to relaxing rules on medical marijuana dispensaries. And if you remember the old story, there was a video where a lady, you know, over on 8 Mile, where all the dispensaries were concentrated, they ended up being all, like, over here in this area right before you get to Highland Park. Or maybe it was this area after. Yeah, it was over by 8 Mile. So it was up here. Anyway, <laughs> she was like, this has just become weed town over here. And it's like, well, you know, you went from, like, 300 dispensaries to, like, less than a hundred really and they all kind of you'll see they right here that these black areas are available places and then you got your schools you got to be a thousand feet from those and then you got your public parks you got to be a thousand feet from those there's a lot of these parks man and schools obviously and then of course you have a religious institution buffer 1000 feet and then this ridiculous over the top permitted controlled substances buffer I don't even know what that is but they're everywhere so um there was very little places where you could have a dispensary but all that's about to change. 60%. Um, now, this was before it was actually done, but it did pass. Uh, I guess they pretty much called it and then called it a night last time they updated this article. Um, so, basically, where we got here, uh, the proposal would eliminate the City Board of Zoning Appeals Authority to review dispensary applications. Ha ha. It would allow dispensaries to open within 500 feet of another dispensary and dispensaries to open within 500 feet of religious institutions and eliminate the requirement that the city hold public hearings and solicit public comment on proposals to open dispensaries. In addition, the proposals would establish a process for licensing dispensaries that bypass the Detroit City Council and opts into the licensing regulations issued by the state. Very good. So you prevent the ridiculously um, power-hungry and overpowering, no justification for the amount of power exercised uh, city council. 
I mean, we're talking about um, James Tate, and he literally was on a crusade to shut down dispensaries. And the crusade was pretty brutal. I mean, literally, like, you know, you lost almost 200 dispensaries. So that's the good news. Um, marijuana. <laughs> it's winning again, guys. Um, and 2018 is shaping up to be another roller coaster ride. Uh, there's really nothing more to say except for this is only, this is just the beginning. Literally, this is just the beginning of the end of marijuana being illegal. I mean, let's face it, a lot of this legalization is coming with a price that law enforcement still wants to be involved in marijuana somehow. <laughs> if nothing else, in some of the marijuana tax, uh, you know, allocations go right to police. So who knows what's going to happen next or what, what we already have on the table for 2018 but there could be more things that happen more legislative actions could happen at any time you never know when those can happen and when they do happen in the secret or in the dark um you can bet your bottom dollar that it's because a few people in a smoky room in a basement somewhere um talked about making the whole industry their own so I'm expecting a lot of shit to happen, and I don't know what the fuck uh, Jeff Sessions was thinking, but this is just the beginning. Um, this uh, You're not putting this cat back in the bag for sure, but what you're really doing is you're basically looking at municipalities and whole cities and whole states, and they're all asking themselves, what can I do next to relax my marijuana laws? How can I, and the question for others is, is how can I get in on this marijuana green rush shit that still mystifies some government officials and corrupt players and lobbyists and shit. So there's all of that going on. And basically people that have legalized marijuana are kind of like, you know, they're still ironing that shit out. But I'm seeing this takeover happen from here to Jamaica to everywhere in the world. Uh, it looks like, you know, for so long, the, the activists are the ones that are like, oh, we want to legalize marijuana. And we never knew what it was going to look like. Now that we're seeing what it looks like, and you see how it can be uh, manipulated into just big money operations. And like that one guy said, oh, we can't have a bunch of people growing weed at their houses because, you know, that's going to basically make it so we can't offer a, a bunch of people to get rich off the shit. <laughs> it's pretty quite frankly what he was saying there, man. And that's kind of how it is. Like we, we had more of a vision where basically everybody can grow a certain amount of plants and a lot of legalization is like that in fact right now only washington state i think is where you can't grow your own plants like all the other recreational legalization states you can grow plants and a few medical marijuana states you know the ones where you can smoke weed you can usually grow the medical marijuana and that's another thing that legislative legalization is doing. And believe me, they're getting it wrong by doing it with the no smoking and the no growing. It's completely ridiculous. Uh, and you can you can try your hardest to make something, you know, well, we're going to take it into the future and make it so it's only like measured dose pills or, you know, here's some CBD mixed with some THC you know, or vape cartridges or whatever. Like, you can do all the modernization you want and regulate it so it's down to, like, individual packaging and all that shit, but you'll never get rid of the holistic 
you know, cannabis. There's no way you're going to fucking do it. So quit trying. And this is usually Republican led. And it's always the, or like that Democrat that just won in Virginia, they have the same mindset, like Hillary Clinton said, is we got to find out about what safe doses are. They're, you know, what are you talking about safe doses for with marijuana? There's no unsafe dose. So another thing that you see with that is uh, that, I mean, the, the slow approach to legalizing, the rescheduling to Schedule 2, which we definitely do not want to see happen. And the drive towards getting rid of whole plant marijuana and smokable buds or whatever you want to do. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, it, it basically, removing criminal penalties for marijuana needs to happen everywhere. And it's, it's probably like places like Michigan and other places that are so stubborn and continue to arrest people in massive numbers for marijuana. We're talking tens of thousands of arrests every year. We're talking somebody getting arrested every 30 seconds uh, to every like minute in some states. Uh, nationally, I think it's uh, every... 39 seconds somebody's getting a marijuana arrest so you know we're we're on our way but things are it's like i said it's the last gasp of the prohibitionists and it's going to be ugly they're they're going to try to do damage to you know the people that are fighting the hardest to make their vision of marijuana which is not the vision of the powers that be so they're the ones that's going to get crushed under the wheels, so to speak. Well, that's all I got. Marijuana won the 2017 elections. Um, and that's it. <laughs> if I can figure it out. Yep. Peace.